Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Flat Earth Wanderer. It's your boy Resistor Programming here. Um, on tonight's uh, video blog, I was just hoping we could talk uh, briefly about history and how it relates to the theory of the Flat Earth. So, um, we'll go ahead and just get started. First, I just want to go to six, the year 1687 and we'll talk about uh, Sir Isaac Newton. You know, he's the Apple guy that, uh, you know, thought of gravity. And uh, in 1687, he published his Law of Universal Gravitation. And it's a very uh, complicated sounding law. I'm going to go ahead and read it real quick so um, you can just hear it. It states that any two bodies in the universe attract each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. And it sounds a little complicated. All it really means is that anything that has mass attract is attracted to other things that have mass and the strength of that attraction depends on the distance between them so it's, it's not very complicated so then we'll fast forward to 1731 and we'll talk about this very important dude named henry cavendish i personally think he's one of the most important people um to talk about when we're talking about the flat earth theory and uh, the kind of science revolution, uh, Copernican revolution, and uh, the whole the whole science side of what led to the heliocentric uh, model that we live under now. And so Henry Cavendish was born in a wealthy family in France, and he, um, you know, went to school and wanted to be a scientist or whatever. Um, he actually had some pretty notable uh, achievements that he. Um, that he achieved in the fields of chemistry and electricity and I think he like uh, weighed the density of hydrogen and, and discovered hydrogen or something like that like um, I'm not sure I think that's right um, so I mean like he had some notable discoveries what he's actually like most famous for though is um, discovering the density of the earth and uh, accidentally creating or quote unquote discovering at the same time the gravitational constant which in physics is it's like the letter big G and it's uh, it's a number that's used in physics all the time in massive uh, cosmic uh, equations about planets and densities and stars and distances and all kinds of stuff like that and just real quick I'll um, let you know what that what the actual gravitational constant is it's six point seven five four times ten to the negative eleven uh, newton meters squared divided by kilogram squared so I mean that doesn't give you any kind of idea of the actual number with the negative eleven after the um, ten so I mean it's just almost impossible to even understand but anyway that so um, that's what Henry Cavendish is famous for coming up with the density of the earth and at the same time creating G, which is a gravitational constant that from that time on was used, uh, is used all the time in complex physics problems. And why uh, Sir Isaac Newton is important in that is that he came up with that theory about gravity, you know, like I think it was 71 years before Henry Cavendish uh, did the Cavendish experiment, which is what we're going to talk about next. And that's how he found out what the gravitational constant was and came up with big G that they use in physics all the time. And so um, Henry Cavendish, he was uh, in his adult life, um, he was still very wealthy. His mother passed away when he was young and then he um, built these labs when he came home from school that he did his chemistry and electricity um, experiments in. I think he worked with his dad for some of his life. Um, and then after his dad passed away, he continued in, on this huge estate of his doing these, uh, um, doing the, the Cavendish experiment, I think in particular, I think that was like in his later life. So what the Cavendish experiment was and why it's so important to the flat earth is because this is the experiment that solidified for, you know, helped to try to solidify the theory of gravity and uh, kind of backed up the heliocentric model against us which I mean so I'll just talk about the experiment a little so basically the Cavendish experiment is these two uh, these lead balls that he used that he hung from this rod so like imagine that this is a rod and he's hanging these two ba huge balls from the rod 
And then he has these other two even bigger balls that are stationary, huge lead balls. Like I think they're like 350 pounds or something like that. And so um, he places them in a room totally away from everything else so it won't be affected by any kind of like outside influence. And the balls that hang here on this torsion rod that's like hypersensitive to motion, they're set like a little bit away from these giant balls right here. And then over time, they'll be like attracted to each other and it'll like turn them. One will be here and one will be here and the little balls will be on the ends of this thing and it'll like, they'll be attracted towards each other. So this will turn and this little like measurable distance that they turn is, is the gravitational constant. That's the big G, like that's how he, that's how he came up with it. And, and it's just crazy when you start trying to research. First of all, when you research Henry Cavendish, most articles, they like barely mention that he came up with the, with a uh, big G and the gravitational constant. I know I was saying it's his biggest achievement, but like to flat earthers, I mean, and if you're re if it's me researching him, I'm saying that's his biggest achievement. Other people would say his biggest achievement and what's most talked about online it, are his achievements in chemistry and things like that. But uh, what's weird is when you go online and you look uh, you look for this stuff, you look for these for like, you know, um, articles about him from universities and historical type things like that. They talk about all his other achievements and then they like barely talk about the finding the gravitational constant, like they're trying to hide it in there or something. Or like that's not his most like, that's not like really his most notable achievement with like, like it should be. And uh, so that was pretty weird. And then I tried to find modern Cavendish experiments and the only ones you can find like real videos of are either like YouTube videos of people in their own house with like a, sh a hanger on a string with two rocks like hanging off it that are equal um, weight, you know, sitting with a, like near two other rocks and then the time lapse will like show them come together, which I mean, who that what kind of errors can occur with that, you know what I mean? And then also these tiny little uh, already built Cavendish experiments that you can buy and they're and you can still do them in your own home, so they're still gonna be subject to error, but one of the things that they say online that it's like why Cavendish's experiment is supposed to be so airtight is because he built it in this whole, he was rich, so he built it in this huge separate like shed that he had on his estate where no one could go near it and he like looked through these little telescopes to like watch for the movement on these mirrors and uh, with the light beams on these mirrors and stuff and so they were like he eliminated all doubt of any kind of like issue with the experiment because he took all these precautions and built it in this crazy like structure that would cause you know minimal sensitivity from anything and he was like even a person walking by will you know cause it to be disrupted and you'll get bad data and stuff and just, it's just really odd when you lo start looking at it you're like okay we should be able to recreate this if this dude did this back in 17 uh, I think it was like 98 or something or something like that back way back in the 1700s if some if he could do that back then we should be able to have giant modern experiments that prove gravity because that's the first time gravity was proven and like where the gravitational constant comes from so the whole thing is like crazy and mind-blowing and i'm just like this dude is important because i mean he i'm 99% I'm sure he was a freemason i can't find like 100 percent proof on there but it's like there are pictures of him. Every picture of him he has is like hand in his jacket like this, and you'll you'll see. I'll like put some pictures up and stuff of him. But it's just interesting. You you start going back and you start scrutinizing these historical characters, and you start finding out that like it's all bullshit, and it, that just lends to the flat Earth theory. And it's like argument today. People argue that they found out that they found our shit out 300 years ago, and you're just like okay and why have we not like reproven that why do we still just go by what they say 300 years ago because some scientists said that it's what we're supposed to do and the scientists got a degree from some school when a degree like if you really think about it means that you're like extra good at being brainwashed to the ma you you like passed your extra brainwashing classes after you had after you left high school and i'm not saying like a college degree is good or a bad but, like uh, it's good for good for certain reasons for different people but I mean, that's not where you're going to find real education on, like, history and, um, um, probably, like, history, really, mostly, and, like, um, advanced math, I think, like, I don't know yet, like, the specifics of it, because I'm not an expert in calculus and things like that, but it just seems like when you, when you start looking at gravitational constant and how this dude found it back in the day, 
and it just doesn't seem like it everything adds up and then all the modern science is based on this number that this dude found back in the 1700s and that's what all the models that we have nowadays are built off of so it's just that whole thing again with like a, all this compounding lie adding up and um i just think it's interesting and i wanted to share it with you guys because henry cavendish seems like an important character in history and especially how it relates to the flat earth so um yeah i mean it's it's interesting stuff and uh i think that's about all i got for this episode but um do your own research look into henry cavendish and the cavendish experiment maybe i missed something and and there are modern um like really well done modern cavendish experiments or um maybe all the stuff i was looking for is bullshit i'm not even i don't know that's um i'm i'm thinking that it's sourced information i'm looking at like university websites and things like that but i mean i don't know it's uh, it's all establishment stuff anyway but if you want to look up the cabin if you a good thing to look up um with the cavendish experiment is this just type in like go to youtube and type in 60 symbols cavendish experiment and um like a noted university from um england where he i think like taught or studied or something um talks about his experiment and why it's important and then tries to like recreate it and they have trouble and it's just an interesting video but it also gives a little bit of backstory but do the research for yourself um don't be discouraged you know reach out there's a flat earth community out there for you if you need it so uh just remember to resist your programming guys and i'll catch you soon thank you very much bye